rather than joining Democrats and Biden in good faith bipartisan negotiations to make progress on immigration. They are taking orders from Donald Trump and actively obstructing a bipartisan border deal. Just as Trump is openly hoping for an economic downturn in our robust low unemployment economy, they're hoping for chaos at the border and trying to stop us from preventing it. That is a prediction of sorts from Jamie Raskin that we've got the possibility for this deal to fund the government to do something about the border. And the Republicans say they want that, but are they really gonna want that when Donald Trump says, no, just let everything go to hell. And he was proven right almost instantaneously because Donald Trump took to True Social to say this. I do not think we should do a border deal at all unless we get everything needed to shut down the invasion of capital M millions and millions of people, many from parts unknown, presumably some from parts known into our once great but soon to be great again capital C country. Also, I have no doubt that our wonderful speaker of the house, Mike Johnson, will only make a deal that is perfect on the border. Remember, without strong borders on us elections, we don't have a country. So that is saying just don't 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 do anything. Like the Senate is working on this deal, a deal which I'm sure will include many components that myself and possibly many of you will not like that seem to go against what you would expect in terms of border policy with a Democrat in charge. But even that is not enough for some of these crazy people, a significant percentage of the House and already even without Donald Trump getting involved here, whether the deal would be possible seems dicey at best because of how radical the, the House GOP is on this topic. But now they've been given the go ahead by Donald Trump to set fire to this entire thing. And there is of course in there as well, a little bit of an implicit threat to the Speaker of the House. So like it's phrased as I, I have nothing but the greatest confidence. But he's <laughs> saying if it's not perfect on the border, if it doesn't stop the millions and millions, some made up number of people coming across the border, then X, something must be done. And we showed you yesterday, Marjorie Green saying that if she doesn't get what she wants on the border, she'll be the one filing to vacate the speakership. They've already shown themselves willing to do that in recent months. So it's a threat that I think Mike Johnson is probably gonna have to take seriously. And already today he's coming out and saying that he thinks now is not a time for comprehensive immigration reform and seeming to you know effectively bow down to that faction of the party. We don't know exactly how this is gonna go. If the Senate comes out with a big deal and if it's received well nationally, maybe that puts pressure on the Republicans. But right now it looks like chaos is coming. What do you think, Viviana? Well, you said it, John, chaos is coming. And, you know, I'm frankly not surprised at all because I think we're going to have a hard time getting any legislation, any deals passed uh, until there's a new president in office because there's too much money to be made by a border deal and construction contracts and all those kind of back end deals that go on with this kind of legislation. So we're going to continue to see the stalling. I'm not surprised even when. Uh, the the Democrats present on a platter horrific legislation that gives them what they want. They're still going to say no just because they want to wait until they're really driving the bus so they can do it their way. And they, they're just going to say no to just say no. That's the kind of situation we're in uh, right now in government. They're blocking every single thing. I do want to point out that I really love your impression of Trump. And I'm a little bit confused because parts unknown, sadly, we lost the host several years ago and the, That's there's true. no other cast. So I don't know what show he's referring to, if it's parts unknown or if there's some other show that he's referring I'm sorry, a little joke in there. I but don't know. <laughs> um, he likes he likes old TV, you know, he pines for it. I, I, miss, show. I miss shows like that too. So I, I do get that. Um, but anyway, yeah, look, I, I agree. I mean, Look, we know how performative so much of this is, how exaggerated it is and how performative it is. It's why when, this is like a week ago, we didn't cover it on the show, but there was some report about the number of migrant crossings that were stopped by the Biden administration. And it was some really high number. And all the right wingers were like, look at that, that's how bad it is. But it was a demonstration of how they're stopping people. Like. It literally shows that the better you do the same exact thing as when it's like, you know, we seized this many tons of fentanyl or whatever. When you do better, 
they use that as evidence that the situation is untenable. Um, because they don't actually, they don't fundamentally care. Yeah. That, why do you, why do you think that GOPs, GOPs who represent districts in Wisconsin are constantly foaming at the mouth over the situation at the border? Because it's performative. They this, need this is- to tell their audience to be terrified that yeah. terrible people are coming across the border from mental institutions to rape and kill your family. That's what all of this is about. And as soon as Donald Trump becomes president, the situation is going to be fixed real fast. Now, through yeah. policy, they're just not going to care anymore. Okay, you know they're going to want to build a wall. They're going to have to fear monger a little bit, but they're going to also have to imply that simply by him being in charge, suddenly your family is much safer. So that's the way it has always been with the border. It's worse under Trump and the current Republicans, but it's hardly new. You can go back many presidents ago, and this is the exact same nonsense arguments that we had about the border back in the aughts and in the nineties. Decades, I apologize. Son. Continue. Decades. No, I mean, this is the fear and this is the, the scary part of a two party system is that the pendulum is shifting so far right because the left, supposed left, is trying so hard to sort of kind of gain some sort of partisanship. And now look here we are, Biden actually cracking down on the border, cracking down. Get arresting people, still separating families in some cases, but that's not looked at as favorable until there's somebody of their own party in charge. Then if they do yeah. it, then it's favorable. So it's it's just, it's scary because we see that pendulum shifting further and further. I mean, they're calling Biden a Marxist. I mean, <laughs> I wish. So I just, it's yeah. a scary time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. And and that's why we said like to to the extent that we could believe perhaps that some of the continuation of immigration policy between the Trump administration and the Biden administration was in pursuit of them giving him some credit. That was always a waste of time. I don't think that's the only reason he continued those policies. I think the idea that Joe Biden is gonna be everything we want in immigration, if you ever believe that, that's a crazy thing to believe. Um, But he's also not gonna get that credit. And in terms of the pendulum swinging, I will remind everyone that Donald Trump went into his first term talking about building a wall. The things they are talking about building these days are worse. They're talking about sending hundreds of thousands of soldiers to the border and effectively turning a swath of the southern United States into concentration camps. That's what they are openly discussing doing. Um, now that's not enough to scare like a Ben Shapiro. I mean, he's not Mussolini or anything, but he is talking about building a network of concentration camps to hold and separate families. For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.